Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Metra AV Tech Tips. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. And we got somebody sticking their head in from the side there. Wanting to know if we're available for a phone call. <laughs> no, not quite. And the question is, no, no, we're not. <laughs> so, Adam. Brent. Adam. Brent. Um, let's talk about the uh, usual spiel, give it, and move forward. Yeah. So, uh, of course, everybody, thank you for joining us today. As always, we go live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Um, Apparently, uh, other members of the tech department forget that. Well, it, 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 they, he wasn't asking for that. He was worried, saying that we might not actually be live. Really? Uh, let me just double check and see. Yeah, no, we're live. We're good. Okay. Everybody, thank you for joining us today. As always, uh, like, share, subscribe, hit that little bell to let you know whenever we do go live, which of course is every Wednesday at 3 p.m. And we are live, apparently. And we are live. Uh, and as always, also, uh, um, share out this video uh, to as many people as you possibly can. We really Friends, appreciate neighbors, it. neighbors, people you don't like. Yeah, we are up to, uh, you want to know how many subscribers we're at, I Brent? do, and thank you for asking. Um, we are currently at... 99,627? Yeah, you got it. Uh, 2,346 subscribers. That's a long way to 99,627. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're getting there. We're, you know, baby steps, right? You know, we're, we're, we're getting there. You realize I'm old. I, I, and by the time I'm, we get, I'm going to die before. I, you know, you know. You're look, not doing anything look, to help me. All we need to do is just go viral once and we're good. Okay. Right? Right. So that's the day I die. I get it. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, so before we get going. Yes. I, I do want to cover my past weekend. Okay. Yes. Oh, as, please. Yes. As mentioned last week, the week mm -hmm. before, and the week before, mm -hmm. I was at the CTA Value Electronics King of TV shootout yes. in New York this past weekend, which was awesome. I will say that not being a big fan of television, mm -hmm. and you know, honestly, what little I see is here. Here. Sure. Legitimately. Yep. Wow. Yeah. The, the upgrades in the past year from a year ago's competition to this year was tremendous. The new QD Sonys mm -hmm. and Samsungs, mm -hmm. man. Um, not being a big TV viewer, it's worth thinking about. Well, and, 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 well, and here's the thing, TV viewing, like, like just broadcast television, you're really not going to gain a whole lot on some of these no, just because the of the streaming stuff. Oh and man, that's it was, it's amazing. The the um, well, the, the 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 winner. What was there a winner? Oh, per absolutely. Se? Now there was two days. 4K TVs was on Saturday. Right. 8K was on Sunday. Okay. Saturday was uh, the Sony QD OLED. Yep. The Samsung QD OLED. Yep. A LG OLED, and then there were two micro LED TVs. Yes. Um. First off, the micro LED TVs, had you not seen the QD OLEDs, were incredible. Yes. I mean, it's just like, yeah, wow. Yeah. Substantial jump. But once the QD OLEDs turned on, yeah. the micro LEDs, is that out of focus? Right. I mean, I'm looking at thinking, okay, maybe my eyes are going bad. Maybe yeah. it's the angle. Nope. As good as they were, mm -hmm. the, the black levels and the sharpness of the QDs is just astounding. Now, when I started the TV shootout seven or eight years ago, sure. the spread between best and worst was very obvious. Yes. I mean, huge you, point spread, no question. Yep. This year, it was a two-point spread max between the winner and, and the, the last, loser. And the last place. Yes. Yeah. Right? I mean, not so, <laughs> first and second. I mean, start and finish. Not, not a Ricky Bobby, if you're not first, you're last thing. No, no, right. no, 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 no. First and absolute last. It was and a spread very, of two very, points. Very, very, very tight, tight race. Right. Um, now, individual competition, there might be a little bit more or less, mm -hmm. but the overall scores, yeah, less than two points. It was amazing. So, uh, with the Sony QD LED or Q, QLED, whatever, whatever QD LED, QD LED, Quantum Dot LED, oh, Quantum Dot OLED. Well, it, correct. Now, the interesting thing about that one is, is who? Well, okay, so Samsung makes the, the panel, glass. They right? make the glass. Yeah, which the technology behind that, it, it takes some time. And, and uh, actually, uh, Linus Tech Tips put out a video on that. They actually got, had a chance to go and visit the, the factory where they, where they make it. Um, and they talk about all the technology and the science behind it. Go check that video out because it's, it's phenomenal the way that they're doing it. It's, more, it's less of a blocking light and more of a changing the frequency of the light as yeah. it shines through. Yeah. When, when Fascinating you look, stuff. When you look at traditional LEDs, it's um, transmissive, yep. meaning going through it, yep. where the organics, whether it's QD or OLED, are emissive, yep. meaning the actual device is yep. generating its own. That's why the black levels are so good. Yeah. But the big change has been in how bright 
these panels get. So yes, the black levels are down to here, but your peak nits yeah. way out was there. way down there. Yeah. You know, compared to like a Z series LED mm -hmm. from Sony. Now you've got the black levels that with are, are off, incredibly right? They're just low. Yeah. And then the bright levels are holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. He's like Yeah. No, well, when you're watching these things in, in a dark space, which I'm sure that one, or they well, had different was, ways of testing, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. There was, um, you know, they, they do daylight SDR, HDR, mm -hmm. and then there's uh, control lighting, HDR, SDR. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a few interesting things. Mm -hmm. um, when they were doing the 480i yes. upscaling test. Yes. Uh, one of the panels was showing uh, sparkles and lock issues. Well, and what's funny about that is you took our cables yes. to this show. Yes, and you and I have taken this same phone call. Yes. Now, and, so, and actually, real quick, are, are you supposed to have that out here? Uh, yeah. All We're right. talking about coiling. Okay. I'm, I'm just making sure that yeah, that, no, no, that one... No, that's okay. 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 That's okay. I'm just making sure. No, no. But, um, you know, you and I have dealt with this issue. Uh-huh. And this particular TV just did not lock in at 480i. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, it's probably the panel, but it's, you know, Let's I, make we're sure. cable people. Yeah. I don't care who you are, yeah. things happen. Now, we've sure. already been watching 4K maxed out, but still. On that same cable. Same cable, yep. same display. Yeah. So just to be sure, swapped at the cable, and it's still not working in the jet, the ISF guys, which are picture guys, yes. not HDMI engineering not guys. Not signal guys. Right. Yeah, correct. And I'm a signal guy. I, yeah. I'm not qualified to be an ISF guy. Yeah. It's like, why is this? Well, it's equalization curves. Mm -hmm. And what has happened is there are different equalization curves for different frequencies. Yeah. And this particular panel, the equalization curve for the 480i had effectively just been tossed out the window and they put their money yeah. into making sure that it worked better. So the EQ band had mm -hmm. gone up. Mm -hmm. And there may come a point in time when 1080, I-1080p is not properly supported. Right. Yeah, no, some really cool things are, are happening with that. I mean, you, you got to think also, even like DirecTV or, or Spectrum or whoever it is that you get your, your broadcast TV from, in a lot of cases, you may be watching a 480 video, upscaled but, it's, to 720. but it's, it's upscaled first to a 720 and well, then given and to the TV. The reason they're still doing the 480i test right. is because there are a lot of cable boxes mm -hmm. that still will not allow locked in output resolution right so they default the native yeah and if it's 480i that's just what it is yeah yeah and that can be a problem for your tv we see it with uh switchers mm -hmm. you know avrs tvs it's like yeah try not to be there if you can avoid it uh mark is saying most of what is broadcast is still 720p that's correct yes uh, the absence of light is black and that's correct um, and that's what that's what makes an emissive that's what, better oh, than a transmissive so good. because all you can do in a transmissive is try to make the cell so dark. Well, and just 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 block it in yeah, as much as possible, right? Yeah, but the light doesn't get right? through it with an emissive. You just shut off. But you can't block all of it because right. it lights a wave. It's, it's going gonna to crest over, over it and, and under it. Um, and then he said, which is why emissive is so good. Now performance is equal to or better than plasma. Ye oh, oh I'm yeah. way beyond plasma now. Well, I mean, we HDR are. certainly has taken that to a whole nother <laughs> level. Incredible, incredible views. Um, now, we have, you know, it's different... The content that was mm -hmm. used is straight up content available to the consumer. Yes. Now, yes, well, there's and, some... and not only that, but the panels that were tested are from yeah, this is a local retail. store, right? Yeah, they, they, you go to a retailer and buy I it. I can tell you that none of these panels was a ringer right. brought in from a manufacturer. Right, right. They were all straight off the showroom floor or out of the warehouse. Yep. Yep. Which is also a little bit scary. Now, having said that, before they went to the competition, mm -hmm. they were ISF off site because there's just not enough time. The room's not open. Sure, sure. To do this beforehand because you don't know how long it's going to take. Some sets, Sony is probably the most consistent in build, mm -hmm. meaning what comes out of the box, you can predict pretty close to how long it's going to take you right. to ISF that set. Right. LG also fairly close. Samsung, not. They get to the ISF levels. Mm -hmm. They just are not as consistent out of the box on, okay, so this could be a three hour job, a six hour job, a 10 hour job. So actually, so tell me this then, how, um, well, while watching, and I'm sure that the ISF guys still were, were tweaking here and oh, there. Oh, they were. Now. Because when you move it. Sure. Diff your conditions change. Right. Now, when, when these guys are there ISFing, you know, to, to turn it into a verb, um, when they're tuning these, these displays, 
are they using any kind of equipment to do that? Oh, absolutely. Or is it all by eye? Absolutely. There is very, very calibrated cameras that they use to look at the panels. They, they do like and the then suction cup things or whatever. And then there's specific ISF tests, mm -hmm. which the Meridio have built into them. Mm -hmm. And they were also using content from the new Spears and Munsell disc. Yes. Which is not yet available. Yep. You know, this was a pre-production disc. Yep, yep. Running on the Oppo player. Yep. Which is still the... It's still one of the best still ones to the use. standard to use yeah. for that. Yeah, exactly, which is unfortunate that Oppo stopped making it. Um, okay, so... Now, now, the 8K, just yeah, 4K oh yeah, was oh yeah. stunning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 8K, you know, the, the whole, do I really got to go to 8K? I mean, yeah, why? Yeah, right? Well, first off, the reality of it is hardware has to lead content. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to make content Unless, if there's nothing if there's to no view hardware. it on. Right. And we saw this when we switched from... Uh, 480i to 480p, and mm -hmm. then from 480p to 720, and then you know going to 1080i, 1080p. It those that don't remember the early early days, there was Jay Leno, mm -hmm. and there was a Directv DTC 100, mm -hmm. which only worked on a specific RCA television with a very specific cable. Yeah, that's what it took. Yeah, and within a year, there was a wide variety of products. Yeah. Same thing when 4K rolled out. Now, fortunately, Netflix, Amazon, and all the streaming services caught up quickly. Right. And 8K, as fiber's getting rolled out and higher bandwidths are getting to the home, there's already a fair amount of 8K content on YouTube. Yeah, it's on its way. That's, that's so for sure. it's real. It's there. So, um, well, first I want to say, the, the, the Sony TV is the one thing that... I will say, makes me want to have more money just to buy one of those. Now, as, as good as as everyone talks about it, and now because it, it's got the it's got the Samsung panel, but it's got the Sony, Sony processor in there. That just the 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 quality of that. Now, so we, we have we have they they, they want to they have some questions. Okay. Um, uh, uh, so we, we did talk about ISF calibrators and and what they now, do. By the way, yeah, that's a skill set that. Oh yeah. When when it's done, yeah, it's like wow. I'm not that guy. And yeah. watching watching Justin from uh, Meridio, watching John Reformato from Value Electronics, mm -hmm. um, and um, the nice or Dwayne Davis, the nice. Yes. yes. Watching those guys do their thing, and yeah. you know, it's it's like when you and I are developing products here. Yeah. We get into things that other people look, really. You worry about that. Well, because we have to, because right. we have to work in very defined areas to yes. make sure we've got a broad breadth of adaptability. Sure. So watching these guys do their thing, am I that guy? No, mm -hmm. but do I appreciate what they do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. So uh, is Sony worth the extra money? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, having said that, in all honesty, mm -hmm. whether it's the Sony QD, whatever it is, um, the Samsung QD... And Samsung's a killer because they use the exact same part number with a different alpha character for different series. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 9500. Yeah, but which 9500? Which, which one? Yeah, yeah. The QD Samsung and this the uh, LG OLED, any one of those sets is a winner. There's mm -hmm. no question. This year, yeah. compared to every year in the past, yep. any one of those sets would make you phenomenally happy. They, they were literally splitting hairs, and they... Yeah. They... It's like, wow. Yeah. This is the most... And there was also an out-of-the-box setting. Oh, great. Okay. After all the judging was done, they reverted all the TVs back to, the back to factory. Yeah. Out-of-the-box settings. And the Sony still was the winner. So uh, the experts want to know who won? Well, Sony. The Sony. Yeah. On the 4K. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the 4K Sony won. And then on, on the 8K. Now, this was a little bit of a, right. a different situation because LG had what was there was... Um, Rit, uh, Robert's 8K LG, which was a $30,000 TV a year ago. Mm -hmm. Right. It's still current, and it's still a $30,000 television. Yeah. The power supply was that wide, that tall, and that deep. It was just and two cables. That we, you know, we're looking at this thing, and Jay, Justin and I were looking. It's like, where, where do you put this thing? Yeah, yeah. What, what's I, what? I, no clue. But <laughs> as an integrator, I'm like. Yeah, I, I hate no, that. No clue. <laughs> I hate everything but about that. But it's a $30,000 set. Yeah. The Samsung and the Sony were 6 and 10. Mm -hmm. The LG won. But did it win by $20,000 margin? Honestly, in my opinion, no. Right. Now, the other thing, 
The LG is an 88. Mm -hmm. The Samsung and the Sony are 85. Yeah. Unless you physically have them right next to each other and break out the tape measure. Yep. You, yeah, you're that getting three to sizes that you're not picking up exist. on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there you go. So that answers that question. So Sony won the 4K, LG won the 8K, um, which is just phenomenal on uh, displays and, on both of those. You know, it's a, and again, there is a dearth of content today. Mm -hmm. Today. Yeah. It's coming. And it will absolutely be here. Now, what we used as a media supply mm -hmm. for this was Sony's Road Tour 8K machine. Right. Which is a computer, mm -hmm. display port to HDMI adapter. Right. And we were there till 8 o'clock after the 4K thing finished at 5.30, trying to get it going. Gave up. Came back early the next morning. As I was walking in, I happened to run into Robert and Pablo from Sony. Yeah. It's like, guys, we're having an issue. And I legitimately don't know what Pablo's magic touch is. <laughs> he walked in, pushed the button. But it just, it worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's like the phone calls we get. Yeah. It wasn't working. They call us and it starts working magically. Like, yeah, so there we, you go. You know, it's... Um, so uh, Mark brings up a good point. We should probably uh, explain ISF more. Okay. And honestly, not well, not not right now. What I'm thinking instead. Do a show with it with an ISF. You know, with that's a someone good call. from yep. who who has been trained in ISF. In fact, I would almost say, should we see if we can get someone in here that that uh, is trained in ISF and, and go through the process of that? Probably, because that is something. You know what? Oh, that's what I was just going to say. I was just going to say, we've got a panel here. We can, we can, you know, well, I don't know if, who's paying the, the ISF cost to do that, but get somebody in here, look at the at the process of ISFing this display specifically to get an idea Which of is, what it and takes. And this is a horrible condition for any it's display. With I mean, these. We've got all the lights, we've got everything else going on, and, and not only that, but this panel's been on the wall for quite a while now. It's already been replaced once. It's yeah. already been, you know, and it's older. And on top of that, it's not their top of the line no, you know, it's, LG No, in fact, I think it was the least expensive we could buy with 4K 120. Yeah, yes, yeah. And in fact, it's still missing a feature that, that we needed for it, which is another thing entirely. So uh, so you better break out the credit card because we need a different TV. Um, Thank you for spending my money. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead. I think we should go ahead and get into our topic of the day. Okay, and what is today's topic, Adam? Well, today's topic is, hit the dun, button here. Dun, dun. What happens to a coil wire, a coiled wire? I mean, why do you not want to coil yeah, a wire? why do you not want to coil a wire? Or, why do you want to coil a wire? Well, I can only think of one reason to coil a wire, and that's to do magic tricks to fascinate your buddies. Right, right. So, and I think you have a magic trick set I do, up. I do. So first and foremost, before we get into the show and tell stuff, I want to talk about what do we mean by coiling a wire? Let's, let's, let's just set the, set the stage here well, a little bit. Keep it simple. So just, yeah. So That's a coil. You've got too long of a, of a cable of some kind, and you've got room up in, in the attic above the display, so you just coil up the wire and leave it up there in the attic, right? And that's pretty much exactly how we're behind the display. Or yeah, yeah. They'll wrap it around the arms on the mount. Yep, yep. Just have some kind of coil somewhere else because you have extra wire that either you you can't terminate, re-terminate, mm -hmm. or you don't want to cut because, because you want to have HDMI the HDMI cable. Right. You, well, you don't want to cut because you have extra length that you want to use for later on. So, um, uh, oh, Mark Silver saying that uh, I'm sure that someone want, would want to volunteer to do it for it uh, for you for the promotion. Which yeah, we we, we can talk We're about that. We're not proud. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, are we talking inductance? Huh. Be patient. <laughs> so when when so in those instances, the, the the question comes up: What happens when we do that? Because the thing is, is when you have a coil, it can cause problems. Can it might not in in certain circumstances, yeah. but to get away from that, because here's the thing, you and I have both, and I've been sitting there when you've done it, so you can't deny it, you and I have both said, go ahead and just coil it up and leave it up in the attic. Yeah, you know, leave some spare up there. Now, yep. I do say a big coil. A, a, a large coil, yes. Because yes. the tighter the coil, the greater the effect. Right, right. Now, so, here's where it gets even more interesting. Yeah. And as you get into your testing, but if you do this, mm -hmm. it's much less of an effect Correct. Than this. Yes. Symmetry is important. Yes. So the bigger the coil, mm -hmm. the larger the coil, the less field you generate. Yep. Um, in fact, as I uncoil this, doing this effectively has no problem. It, it, it negates pretty much all, right, all of it, right? Right. Because yeah. it's just it's right, just there. Just there. So this let's talk about why this episode came up. 
Okay. If you One, remember. Now, and you, you picked these episodes yes. with little or no input from me. Correct. So I don't know. I may remember the event, but I don't know why you picked this so as an episode. We have our, our testing equipment that uh, tests that, HDMI yep. bandwidth, right? Yep. And, and the whole point of it is, is it gets an eye pattern and we're able to see what's going on. On with all it. channels. And now, we used it because we had uh, some new samples uh, from, from manufacturing that we needed to authenticate and make sure that they were going to do what we expected them to do. In fact, I believe I did this because you, you, did. you actually were working that day. Actually, no, this one, this was before, this was actually before you took over that portion of it. Uh, Stuart and I had it sitting out here and we were testing the cables. Now, the cables obviously aren't being shipped uncoiled in a long nope. tube, right? They're not, they're, 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 yeah. Most lengths, when, you just can't do that. we get samples, they generally come in a plastic bag with either a, a plastic tie around them or Velcro, depending on the size. That's right. So we put the cable onto the tester and we did not uncoil it, right? We, we left it, you know, coiled up and wrapped up. Pretty much like this. Uh, and what we did was when we plugged it in, now uh, I'll tell you what, what we were, we were testing for 48 gigs, okay? Just, we'll put that out there. We were testing for 48 gigs and the cable length was short enough that it should have worked at that length. So we plugged it in, tested it, and it failed dramatically. So Stuart and I looked at each other, we said, Hmm. Must be a bad, a bad, you know, just one bad whatever. Yeah, it happens. Grab the next one because they send they send multiple for for testing. Grab the next one, plug it in. Same thing. We saw okay. Well, maybe it's a bad stock. So we we well, luckily they sent us a a, a different one of, we of had, whatever. Yeah, that's when we got five different sizes of cables right. in that box. Plug that one in. Same failure. So as we're sitting here looking at that, I'm thinking to myself, now why why would they send us something that? We a know whole is bunch going to, of something. Is, we know is going to fail. They know we're going to DPL with right. it. Right, yeah. They, we, we know we're going to be testing it. So when, we, when I'm looking at it, I realized that, wait a minute, it's wrapped up. It's in a coil. And I was reminded of something that I did as a child as a, as a, a, a fun little trick, right? So, well, and th this, is, this is part of the, the, the show and tell, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this off very well because the camera's at an odd angle for this, but essentially what I have, and I'm gonna, I am gonna flip over to this camera here. So what I've got is I just took an iron uh, core uh, hex. An Allen wrench. Uh, Allen wrench. And I took some 22 gauge wire and I just coiled it all the way around that. Now the idea behind this, of course, and you probably did this when you were kids and, or you know older with your kids, or I, I don't know how that works, but the idea, is when you do this, just like this by itself, it's, it's not magnetic, it's, it's not gonna pick up anything. However, as soon as you add a current onto it, which this is just a AAA, so the current's very minimal, there's not gonna be a lot of anything there, but now, if we run that current through this and now try to touch it, we are supposed to, if I can do it right, Come on now. You want me to do that for you? You know, I'm old and arthritic. We come back. Oh, well, you need to use both yeah, batteries. Yeah, let me use both. Here. You're paralleling them or seriesing them? Paralleling, because you, you increase the voltage. <laughs> <laughs> if I can do this thing And this here. is why you do it with 9 volts. Yes, because it's much easier. Yeah. I did have a 9 volt battery in, in preparation for this. So once you get these on here like that, we can go in here, and we're going to grab... I can even do this right there. Oh, we this go. is uh, this is riveting television. Oh, I know it is. I know it is, and it's all the commentary that's coming okay. along with it. Let me have here. You're killing me here. <laughs> here. It's got to be the end of it. It's got to be the end of it. I'm I'm having the same problem you were ah, so see? so I'm of I'm of no significant value. It, it, you got it to work before the I show. Did. I did. I did. You see the tape. I know you see the tape. The tape is only there to hold yeah. the, the the coil together. No, no, no. It's got to be the end of it. Oh. Well, this is embarrassing because you did it. I did I just had, before the show. And now it's repelling because it's been charged. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're gonna look like an idiot. Do it on do it on TV. Do it, do it live, right? Do it on do TV. Do it live. At least we're not doing math. Yeah. Well, this is true. This is true. So maybe, even... maybe the maybe we add this to our things of don't do's. 
Don't don't do math well, live and no, don't do we, demonstrations we just, live. We uh, get a nine full. Ah, there's the problem. Can you get it? No, it's it's. You know, I I swear you did it. Before. I did. I did. You saw it. I know you saw it. I did. <laughs> Yeah, you did. You did. You did. You I did. got one. You got one. I okay. Got All right. Ready? One. And then release. Wait, wait. Go, 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 go this way. Go this way. Go this way. And release. Got it. There. Wow. Okay. Let's ah. not do that again. Uh, let's see. Steve Barrett is saying Chuck Barris hit the gong. Yes. Do you know what and that, it, what oh, that is? Oh, the Gong Show. <laughs> Chuck know. Barris was a coked out <laughs> MC on this TV show oh, called that one. The Gong Show. That one. We had panels that would judge acts. Right. And he was. The clothes, the look, the hair. Waiting for waiting for the failure to. Oh yeah, the it gong. was it was an accident <laughs> on television waiting to happen. Okay, it was so awesome. The point is, is that we wrapped, we coiled a, a wire around something, and what's happening is we're creating a magnetic field because of that coil. Essentially, what's happening is that the the, the current that's running through this actually creates uh, every actually a straight string of of, of wire. If you run a current through it, it is creating a, magne a magnetic field. Well, we field. know that because of EM. That's right. That creates issues when you get that pulse. That's right. That's, that spark gap pulse down uh, 110 will lock out. The difference here is that because it's coiled, we're magnifying that magnetic field in that coil. And so it actually strengthens it to the point where it can actually create a magnet to pick up something and hold it up in the air. An electromagnet. An electromagnet. That's right. Now. For the old guys, would you flip over to the over or to the uh, Apple TV for a second? I sure can. For the old guys mm -hmm. that remember analog, a reverb. A reverb, yeah. Now it's just a spring mm -hmm. that you sent the audio signal through. Yep. And it created a field in it that gave you that kind of openness, and you could actually adjust the sound of that mm -hmm. by loosening or tightening the spring. Now, what I find interesting with this is that is that an XLR? Is there three no, that, runs on that? There are, it's different, you've got different frequencies. So there's two jacks, it's an in and an out. Right. It's not an XLR, it's just a standard in and out. Oh, okay, but so, by so, okay. Different, if you look at the pitch on the springs. One's tighter, one's right. longer, one's, okay. All right, I got you. Which would give you different. Different effects. Di yeah, di different reverb effects. Okay, so now that we know what happens here, when we, when we, now the question this. is, well, does it happen here? Well, hold on. So what, what, what we were doing was it was still coiled when we were testing. Yeah, tightly. It. Tightly. And it was, it was actually a little bit tighter than this. Um, and so we had it plugged in, and, and we ran it through the tester, and sure enough, it failed. And that's when it clicked uh, in my head. I realized, wait a minute. I told Stuart, uncoil that. And so we, we draped it around the, the, the room here so that was because it was a long cable. Um, uh, hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, it was a very long cable that we tested with it, and and sure enough, as soon as we opened it up, it passed. And it wasn't just passed; the eye patterns changed dramatically. Dramatically. Now, when we dropped the bandwidth to a lower bandwidth, it worked. So what that tells us is that a higher bandwidth, we're passing more data through, right? And so, in in, in essence, maybe we're increasing the current. By doing that, well, you certainly the, the 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 current pulses are increased. Well, what's happening is that the because they're they're closer together because okay. the, the the bandwidth is remember is, yeah. HDMI is digital, mm -hmm. so it's pulse on, pulse off. Yeah, depending you know pulse 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 on on off on off off whatever. Sure, sure. The higher the bandwidth, the more consistent the current because it's working well, faster. The more consistent the current, but also the 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 shorter that the the swings are happening. That, so there's more swings happening in a short yes. amount of time, and so because of that, you the the the, the field stronger. The field well, it's it's not stronger. What it is is that the f rate of failure is higher because the field is still basically the same, but now it's affecting more ones and zeros in a, in a shorter period of time, and so that's why it fails at a higher bandwidth than it does for a lower bandwidth. So, for instance, here I'll, I'll um, I need to I'll draw this because it makes more sense. Ooh, that was the wrong one. There we go. Hand me the red, blue, green. So we have, let's say, for instance, and this is in no way an exact drawing of what this looks like. Oh, come like. on! Tell me you're doing it to scale. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, exactly, to scale. So here's our one and here's our zero. And so with, let's say for instance, at 1080p, uh, you have, you know, here's the change here and here and here, right? And so the bandwidth is, and so you've got the, you've, you've got your time happening at whatever intervals. Oh, and that's a very accurate interval rep representation. Sure, uh, of course, of course. Well, it'd actually be more like this, wouldn't it? So when you've got, and actually it's not even that, but so at 1080p, you're looking at something like this. So if, if the field is affecting, say, this room here, like this, and it messes that up, it moves past it pretty quickly, right? It, it doesn't affect it too awfully much, right? Well, and actually the better way to show this would be something like this. You're thinking about doing math, aren't you? Yeah, almost, right? I, I, I might do some math. So the field, because of what this is doing here, the field that's being affected is like this. Fairly narrow. It's, it's, well, it's, it's, it's the, same, the same, you know, amount here. Then what'll happen is we'll switch over and we'll do something that's in say 4K or even 8K. Let's do something, so we jump from 1080p up to 8K. And when we jump up to 8K, the thing is is that these changes are still happening, but they could be happening like this now. Oh, much tighter than that, much, but yes. Well, yes, but the idea is that they're much tighter. So now the 1080p, that, that one all the way up here is much longer, and so it was only affected for one short amount of time, but it's still a one because it, it's, it showed back up. But the, eight, the, uh, the 48 gigs or the, or the 8K, more is happening inside of that one area that's causing More decisions the are being made in the given and period so of time. And so it's failing inside of that, that, that time. So that's why higher bandwidths are harder to go longer distances. That's also why higher bandwidths are more affected by something like a then, coil. Okay, why does it affect a speaker wire? You should never coil your speaker wires. Uh, well, you have, a, you have a story about that. Oh, God, oh, you, wow. You, I hadn't even thought of that yeah. for this broadcast. Yeah. God is talking to me. Yes, you, now, now the thing is, though, is that wasn't a coil. No, that was a length issue that we had to add length to. Right. In fact, you actually co you had created a coil up yes. in the attic. Well, um, not so much a coil, but just do a bunch of extra wire up there. Sure. The watt effect. The, y yep, yep. The watt effect. Yep, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the, the idea, of course, is that when we go to the, the well, tell me why, why you don't well, coil I started, a speaker wire. Well, first off, let's quickie, quickie on the story. Mm -hmm. I did a, a surround sound job in the early 90s. Sure. And the right rear speaker, mm -hmm. the homeowner told me that in the evenings, typically around the same time every night, mm -hmm. he, he joked about it, God was speaking to me. He had a neighbor down the street with a large ham tower. Okay. And evidently the length of the wire was correct enough mm -hmm. that it picked up yeah. the signal from the broadcast and dumped it on the speaker. Mm -hmm. So the solution was we just extended the wire. Now that meant we just, it wasn't like six or eight or 10 feet. I took a right. bunch of wire. Yeah. Wire nutted it in there and just pulled the speaker down and shoved it up and in the hole. Put it up in there, in yeah. the watt effect. Yes, yes. Instead of a coil, but by doing that, we changed the frequency or the resonance frequency of that wire. Right. The problem with coiling any speaker wire is exactly what we discussed a few minutes ago with that reverb. Yeah. Um, it does absolutely affect the signal level. Mm -hmm. You never want to do that. If you have to coil, you really want to do it, go back overhead for a second. Okay. Instead of doing this, oh. Here, do, use this green one. Instead of doing this, you want to do this, a figure eight. Okay. Because the figure eight does not create the field the way a circular coil does. Right. Now, actually, this, this brings up, uh, and I, uh, this is kind of good timing for that, this brings up another question that I had. In fact, I asked you this before the show. Um, I wanted to save it for the show and, and make, see if you stumbled in, uh, a, a, along with it, because that's more fun. And and so it, it's more entertaining, so Thank you. Yeah, there is that. So, Is there why, a bus gonna drive over me any second now? Yeah, right? So it, we, we tout, and, or we, we you know, proclaim, or we, we you know, pat ourselves on the back, that our cables have inter and intra pair skewing. Well, that they have reduced. Or reduced, pardon me, reduced. Intra. Well, 
And what's happening here is a is a twist, right? And, yes. And that twist and essentially. And it's not just here. It's also in category cables yes. and and power cords, right? And speaker wires. So and sixteen four and fourteen four and sixteen two. Is that not just a, no. a coil with extra steps? No. Okay. Now, this is going to be kind of like you doing math. I, I know. You're, you're, you're going to draw. Do you want me to draw it? No, no, no. I'm more concerned about my accuracy than my drawing skills, which also were no, pathetic. I, I, I know. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, I don't do math, and you shouldn't draw. But the same thing happens in an HDMI cable. Okay. When you're looking at data, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a DC waveform. It's an AC waveform. Right. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your crossover points... Are at the exact same distance from each other. From each other, and so you also here, want a specific twisting to eliminate specific resonant frequencies. For yes. example, sixty cycle hum. Yep. The tighter the twist on the wire, the less you're going to pick up a sixty cycle hum. Right. Now there's a minimum twist, and it depends on the gauge. So don't ask me. Yep. I'm not going to recall that. Yep. But the the tighter the twist, the more accurate the the consistency is between point to point and the crossover so you don't have an extra long one on one side and a short one on the other mm -hmm. helps to eliminate noise mm -hmm. and taking the noise away allows for a lower noise floor right coils add to the noise floor right so you may along with all the other detrimental effects you may also get more right well in the and, background in audio anyways and, yes. and, and well, video. in video it's it's break up it's distortion on on the data yeah so with the so now now that we know the difference between a coil and a skewing or a twist, or, or, or a twist you know we're going to twist again like we did last summer sure of course so um children I, I i know the reference that one i understand because they turn it into children's songs now the twist is how does that make you feel the twist is a children's song it, it is now <laughs> Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. I'm just. I'm, <laughs> you always need your little slice of uh, of, uh, of reality there, Brent. Every once in a while. I don't want reality. <laughs> okay. I got so, the mirror for that, but thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, the other thing that happens that we have have deduced as the wad effect is. I, and this is actually fantastic because and it's aesthetically I, not pleasing. I, I, but I no longer will say that my racks are unfinished or undressed kempt. or unkempt or anything like that. No, they are. I am use, utilizing the wad effect, effect to ensure that I have the utmost of signal quality. So, Brent, what is the wad <laughs> effect? Can we <laughs> flip the rack around? Can you turn the rack around? <laughs> um, the, when you here, just take I, here, here, right, right. Yeah, there's the wad effect. Yeah. Now here's the thing. That's the water effect. <laughs> That's the water effect. Give me an overhead. Yeah. There you go. The advantage of the water effect is we don't have a concentric anything. Right. We have now. Obviously, nobody wants the back of their rack to look like no. this. But honestly, from a signal integrity standpoint, it's better. it's a lot better than doing coils. Yes. This is way better than doing this. Right. And the thing, you can take a, like a 16-2 or 14-2, and you can actually tie the wire together in the middle, yeah. kind of like this. Yeah. And you're not going to get the coil effect. But you really shouldn't do that to an HDMI cable. No, because the, 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 right. the, the, the coil ratio right. is too tight at that point. Right, and it's just you might pinch the wire and affect the data capability. Right. But the reality of it is, and you need to stay away from concentric as much as possible. And the watt <laughs> effect removes the concentric yeah. nature of it. Right. And it's just unattractive. I mean, you know, we all want that beautiful. Yeah, of course. Except at our own house because well, we've given up like, on yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's, that, that's different. So, so now you can say that if your rack is not dressed and it's not, you know, perfectly aligned and everything's not good because you've got wires going everywhere and whatnot, it's not because you, ha you are lazy or you haven't gotten around to doing it. It's, it's the watt it's effect. It's the watt effect. You are you are uh, you're you're assisting your system. It's an engineering principle. That's right. It's an engineering. You're you're assisting your system to negate any uh, noise problems. Any noise problems. Um, 
Yeah. I, However, I don't put 110 to, in that. I would love to see uh, uh, see that in action. Uh, uh, the difference between a dressed rack. An actual, an act, yeah. So well, take, okay. take take two racks. Uh, take a picture of my house and you'll see the watt effect. Well, well, the, the so the idea, of course, being that you know signal to noise ratios. That's what we're trying to yeah. to to increase. Increase, right? Yeah. In, yeah. We in, want the noise floor lower, the signal to noise ratio right. higher. So we're trying to increase the, the signal to, to noise ratio. Right. Uh, and so what if if we were to have some way of Quantifying that with an actual number of some kind, mm, uh, what, what would now, happen if we were to what have What is the those difference between a noise floor and a signal to noise ratio, and how they how do they relate to each other? I just dumped you on the spot. You did, so. you did. Uh, so um, that we've done because we had a noise floor episode. Yes, we did. Um, and noise floor is where we're picking up just the general radiation of the of yep. uh, of. It's actually the the the, the universal background, background radiation noise. noise. Well, there's more. It can be affected by 110. It can be affected uh, by sure. transformers. Sure. But effectively, it's just noise that's there, and there's not a thing you can do about it. So signal to noise ratio then being that. So and in, in here's our signal coming into like say an amplifier. Mm -hmm. That amplifier has its own imp impurities or imperfections, and so it is adding those imperfections into the amplified signal that's leaving. Uh, and so then we are either increasing or decreasing, or okay, we're always so decreasing, right? We're always decreasing the signal noise ratio. We're very ever rarely, if at all, ever so increasing. So if my noise floor is 64 and my signal is at 90, and the other option is my noise floor is at 80 and my signal is at 92. Mm -hmm. Which is a better one to have? Mm -hmm. Which one is better? 60 to 90, 82 to 91. 60 to 90. Why? Because it's farther apart. That is the correct okay. answer. Is it? Okay. That I'm is the correct sure. answer. <laughs> <laughs> because. Now, see, hold uh, on. You requested that I not throw anything at you live on air. And but yet, you did anyway. And, yet, and well, no, did I? <laughs> you do, you frequently do just to watch me squirm. So you know, so, payback is what payback is. So the experts are saying that they had a coil of Cat Six about 20 feet at a camera, and it wouldn't pass a picture. And so as soon as they, they removed uncoiled it, it. Uh, uncoiled it or, or removed that coil, it started working. Um, yeah, no, it, there's, it, it, it is one of those things. Look, the, the truth of, of these episodes, yes, this episode came from that function of, of, of us testing that. And it's that. something we verified. But the thing is, is that a lot of these episodes come from our tech support calls. And so if we start seeing, by the way, the Apple TV problems with matrixes and AVRs it's increasing. is still happening. Um, we're getting more calls. We're not sure yet. We're looking into it. I have one guy that's supposed to get back to me as to a couple things that I had him try to see if that fixed it. So if you are having a problem with an Apple TV, we're not sure if it's one specific kind of Apple TV. We don't know if it's the, if it's only the, 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 the newer new one. The new 2.1 chip. Right. Or if it's going to be the other ones as well. But if you are having problems with an Apple TV, call us. It is um, affecting audio breakouts. It's affecting uh, AVRs and matrixes for audio issues, typically. Call us. 386-492-8584 uh, is our direct line to our tech support. Um, let us know what's going on. Um, and then... <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's a funny one. Uh, Chris McDonald is saying, Are you saying service loops are out and now Cedia will offer a cable waddling? Uh, what wadding class this year? Ooh, maybe we should have a cable wadding. Cable class. wadding. Yeah. I, they're gonna have a hard time wadding I'm better just, than us. I, I'm just saying. Now, having said that, <laughs> what you guys did not see on the show is what this area looked like ten minutes before the broadcast. <laughs> ten minutes. I have five minutes. Because it was a complete and unmitigated <laughs> they disaster. Also, they also don't see from Everything, the cone of yeah. view of, of of that camera, so they don't really know what's going on. Um, um, there, there was not just wadding of cable. There is stacks of stuff that there is no That's what organization. I want to know. It, it is, can, it is stacking equipment better than placing equipment side by side? No. Well, I'm uh, a firm other than, believer in thermal issues being other a problem. Than heat, uh, other than heat, is, there, is it better well, to... Well, okay, we're getting off topic sure. here. But there is, there is a belief, particularly among high-end people, sure. that stability of the chassis, meaning weight on the chassis, mm -hmm. there are um, racks you can buy that actually clamp. Yeah. The gear to minimize vibrations because the the assumption is that any chassis vibration, any any power supply transformer vibration will transmit itself into the signal. Well, now, I mean, after seeing that picture, 
I, I could understand where their thought process is yes, coming the, from. The, because not, not, not that they're right or wrong, but where the thought process is coming from. Well, and when you look at subwoofers, for example. Right. If your subwoofer is not solidly connected to the floor, meaning not heavy and it's, it's better, you will lose sonic energy to mechanical energy it's, out of the chassis. It, it, it's, right. it's wobbling and vibrating right. there so on the floor. Cabinet thickness, cabinet stiffness mm -hmm. adds to fidelity. Well, and that's almost like the, like, uh, you know, the Sunfire uh, 8 inch. Super heavy. Yeah, well, sub. well th those aren't. Th those aren't super, oh, they super used heavy. The cubes? They're, they're better. They're, they're, they're the better. The original ones are pretty heavy. Yeah. But the thing is, is that even those, they're small enough to where that eight inch, uh, the, the excursion from the eight inch is enough to make it move. And I've witnessed it myself on that. Sony, on the Sony ES back in the 80s, mm -hmm. they had a cast frame, mm -hmm. brass cast frame for their electronics to sit in because they felt that that added rigidity to the electronics sure. and reduced sonic impurities. Sure. Um, the subwoofer at my house, the Dual 10, the BG, yep. one of the things Fred Yando used to do is he would put a quarter on its edge, standing on top, uh -huh. and then put on um, the German screaming punk band. Um, <laughs> oh. The screaming punk band oh, it was from oh. Germany. Yeah, I mean, it was hardcore. When, when was this? Was this? This was in the uh, uh, early 2000s. Early 2000s. Um, uh, not Ramstein. Uh, yeah, Ramstein. Oh, okay. okay. That's okay. it. All right, all right. So he would yeah. put that, I mean, yeah. this thing is, yeah. and that quarter wouldn't move. Yeah. So his, you know, this is, a testament to cabinet rigidity. Sure. So, and then there's, you know, the guys that put trestles underneath their speaker wires. <laughs> yes. Because you don't want it laying on the floor because of the vibrations. Yeah. I honestly don't know that I can subscribe to that theory. Yeah. But in, at least until they prove it to me. I, I, I don't know if that's a cat walking across the keyboard or if it's actually meant, supposed to mean something. So I'll ask you, KMFDM, does that mean anything to you? Um... No. No? Okay. Well, Chris, let us know if that was the cat walking across the keyboard. I know what something. MKPD stands for. Uh... And this was a very 70s, 80s thing. Uh, I don't know that one. More knobs per dollar. No, okay. MKPD. Okay. All right. All it's right. a very MKPD product. Yeah, that works. So you, uh, you look oh, it's at the... a band. Oh, it's a band. Got oh. it. Oh. Got it. Okay. Uh, and then there's Devo. Mark Silver is saying Devo. 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 Yeah, Devo. There you go. Yeah. So, oh. We are not men. We are Devo. So talking about the the subwoofer and the vibrations of the subwoofer and how you know stronger subwoofer gives you you know better response. That's something from uh, I was talking with someone who is in the SPL competitions mm -hmm. for car audio, um, and they had built uh, and actually um, the experts. I think you know who I'm talking about. They had built their car, um, and what they had done was they they reinforced it with metal. But then they built a trough in the bottom of the car that they filled with concrete. And so just the, the weight and mass well. of the car was high enough. To, and then the rest of it, was the, the actual box, the enclosure was metal. Uh, um, in the late and, 50s, early 60s, enforced. it was not uncommon for the do-it-yourself mm -hmm. home hi-fi enthusiasts to build a concrete cabinet. Yeah. To mount their drivers in. And it's something I always wanted to do. I wanted to do a full four driver concrete mm -hmm. subwoofer cabinet. Mm -hmm. I'd actually seen someone taking a, um, they were building a home theater, and so they took the advantage of it and they built the the speaker cone into the concrete. Yeah, that of, was in France. Of the uh, of the floor. Did, yeah, that's it, that's a French deal. That's a, it's a theater that's in France, and the guy did folded horn bass drivers. Yes. Subfloor yes. built into it, and yeah. it's, it, 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 and it's yeah. using all, all of the go there. And I, and <laughs> We're way off topic now, um, but it, 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 but in some cases, I mean, it's it's a different reason for, for well, it's it, a but different it's, it's, it's a different cost experience than my theater sure, by a long sure, shot. of course. Um, okay, so what what is the what is the outcome for today? The outcome um, for today is coils are bad. Coils are bad. Um, here's the thing: fiber <laughs> it, coils. Now, unless you want a reverb. Okay. Fiber coil. You have a fiber cable. Yeah. Is a coil a bad thing? Uh, okay. So this is an AOC fiber this cable. Is a, this is a trick question because in this case, yes. And why? Because that is not a full fiber cable. That there is, is correct. Still low speed data traveling down. That is correct. The copper of these. 
Now, if you have uh, if you have actual fiber, fiber uh, that's just pure bare, fiber. Pure fiber. There's no copper or anything it's over else there to your on left. it. Over there to your left, hanging on the wall. There it is. Thank you. Ouch. If you have fiber that's full, that has the watt effect on it too. Uh, yeah, this one. <laughs> not not the same reasoning behind it, but here, use that one. So, wow, that just glares off the camera. Yeah. Um, you'd have been better off with the other one. But it's well, the, the, this is this is ethereal branded, Brent. Wow, this is it awesome. is. This is. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen that bag. Uh, you probably haven't. It's not something that that you and I deal with a whole lot. Um, but yeah, no, this is um, this is our bulk fiber. You're right. That does just kind of there it is. This is one of our bulk fiber. Um, this is a pre-terminated one. But yeah, this coil is not a problem. Coil is not a problem, except except if you coil it too tightly. Because then you do stress fractures. Because then you do the, stress fractures. That's right. Um, but in an AOC, don't do it. Right. Because it absolutely affects the DDC channels. Yeah. Now, this is also a six. You're supposed to do a six inch radius. Yes. Just like doing a um, category cable. That's right. Uh, the experts are saying toss link. Yes. Toss link. Um, toss toss link, link is not affected by it. Not coils. affected by it. Um, there is no, no, it, it, it's, it's light. It's fiber. It's fiber, essentially. Yeah. So. Just don't break the fiber. Why would you want to do a coil? The only reason you would legitimately want to do a coil is wire management to make it a prettier rack. Sure. And that's pretty much it. And one of the ways that you can do away with a coil even in a rack that's dressed up nicely is just making sure that you use the length that isn't going to leave you with enough to create well, a multi-coil Well, I'm a big, I'm a big string. service loop guy. Sure. Now, and a single coil is not a problem. Yeah, correct. I mean, if you look, if you're going to take a, a wire down and you want to do something behind a product with like one, that. With one, yeah. You, that's yeah. not well, a worry. Don't show me, show that. Oh. <laughs> that's not a worry. No. Because there's not enough there to create a field. Yeah. It's this. Yes. That's the worry. Because now we're starting to, every time we put an additional wrap on it, yep, we're we adding create more. a bigger field. That's right. And just like adding the batteries, when it took two batteries to pick up the... Right. And screw? I'm kind of curious to know if this is an additive effect or if it's a multipl uh, a, a multiplied I mean, it, effect. Like if, if you do two one... Two plus two plus two or two times two times two right, times two. Right, right. So every time you add a coil, is it multiplying the strength of, uh, of that, that, uh, that... That would be my guess because they're, they are inductive to each other. Right. You're actually increasing your... your, the your uh, what is it? It's a geometric have, progression. When, when you have a wave, it's, it's additive to the wave when... It's a double, 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 double. Right, because it, it comes Not in back and, and, it, and it increases it. Not to be confused with the hamburger it. joint. Um, what, Whataburger? No, double, double. Um, you know, the left coast. I have, I've, I'm, I've, you know, you know, I've only been over there once. You and were there for that one. And they sent you home. Yeah, exactly. Um, in case you need to possibly move a camera. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, yes. But but make in it big. Case, make it make it a big big coil. And hang it in the attic. Hang it in the attic. Um, and or use the watt effect. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it just at this point, it, if just you a take, pain in the butt to look, coil here's to clean up later. Best method for a watt effect, and I'll show you. I, I know. Look, I'm I am a practiced watt oh, effect. Oh, I've seen his work. I am a practiced watt effect. You got the hole in the ceiling that, that you need to put in that, some extra wire in there. Don't coil it and then try and feed it through. No, 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 no. Just. Throw it, you know, a single one all the way through, right up in there. And it's going to wad up perfectly fine. It's going to be great. Look, hey, ask. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it's a, log, uh, it's a logarithmic function. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. That was Mark. Thank you, um, Mark. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, I am, uh, my name is Adam Rogers. Uh, I am here at Cedia to train you all on the wad effect for your cabling. <laughs> um, so, uh, step one, you take your cable and remove any coil that you may have in it. Throw it on the ground, and then from there, whenever you need to put it into something, take your connections, make the, your connections into whatever it is, and throw it in. Uh, that'll be, uh, what, what's the going rate for CDO trainings now? $1,000? Uh, there you go. Okay, that'll be $1,000 from every person. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that, but I did it anyway. That was politically incorrect. <laughs> Uh, We're gonna pay for that, but uh, thank you. You know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, no, 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 no. Honestly, though, um, th 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 that avoid is something. the coil. Avoid the coil. Uh, if you need to have some extra length there, because you may have to move a camera, you may have to move, move another it. device. And look, if yeah. if you can, if you need to have the extra rack, kind of running around the outside of the rack. Yeah. But not the bigger the coil, the less the effect. Yeah. yeah. Bigger the coil, less the effect. Keep it away from power. 
Keep it away from power. 60 power, cycles. Power bad. We don't want to be near 60 cycles. Or anybody else in any other country, anywhere else. 50 cycles. 50 cycles. 220, 221. Um, so, but Brent, I think that kind of covers today's episode. Next week, you are not here. Next week, I'm on vac I'm, uh, Northern California. What about the week after that? I'm here. You are, are you here? I... No, no. Wait, wait, yes. The week after that, I'm at the show in Orlando, Monday, Tuesday. Come home Wednesday. You're at that show? I thought I was at that show. Yeah, you're only there for 15 minutes. You're there right, to do a presentation. Right, right, right. That, yeah, that, yeah, that's right. Okay. So, no, you're not officially at that show. So, we still have to work out the episodes. Uh, um, what were you saying the effect on the Apple TV was? Oh, uh, the problem that, that we're seeing with Apple TVs, if you have an Apple TV, right now, so far, we're seeing it mostly on the, two, uh, the, the new we 4, think. 4K Apple TVs. Um, we have still, the 2.1 chip. We're still testing to see if we can do it. It's not all of them. As far as I can tell, it's not all no, of them. No, because we're not getting a lot of calls a day, but we are getting calls. Right. So the problem that happens is the Apple TV will be plugged into an AVR or a Matrix. Or an ABO. Or an ABO or a switch. Audio breakout. Uh, a, a switch or a splitter. Basically, any kind of distribution for the Apple TV. That's not a TV. That's not a TV. When it's plugged into those, periodically, periodically, the, t the display will go black, audio will keep playing. Or... Audio will stop and display will keep going. Or they get no audio. Or you get no audio or you just don't get anything and it just doesn't do, uh, you just get nothing. Um, jobs that weren't working appear to, you know, they do the same thing. I'm not going to say functioning jobs stop working. I'm saying the same thing they do, have done on 20 other jobs. Yeah. Does not work on this job. And well, they, and we've seen, uh, I've, I've had a call where it was both, uh, they had two Apple TVs, two different AVRs, and it was happening on one but not the other. So they were both the, 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 four, the new 4K Apple TV, but the problem was only happening on one, even though the rest of this, everything else was exactly the same. So we don't know the reason. We're not yet. sure. My theory at this point is that there's something, some kind of chip or something that was used in one run of the, uh, that, of that, that, system that was causing an issue because chip shortages, manufacturers are having to jump from chip to chip to, to utilize. Yeah, plant to plant. Yeah, they're from plant to plant. And so that way they can still produce the product. But unfortunately, there may have been something wrong with that one that a firmware update is affecting elsewhere. We're looking into it to see if we can find a solution. So if you are seeing that as a problem, share data. please give us a call. More data is what we need out of it. 386-492-8584 is the tech support number. Give us a call. You can, of course, email us or uh, call us directly as well. My number is 386-202-6132. My email is adam.rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S, at metroav.com. Brent McCall at brent.mccall at metroav.com at 386-202. 6137 and both Adam and I do answer the phone when we're mm -hmm. not in the office except the lunchtime when we really need a break from each other. And weekends. Um, for me anyways. Uh, and Mark, you do have one of the- What are you saying that the... I don't need a break from you? Mark has a really good solution for the Apple TV okay. problem. Use a Rokus, a Roku, <laughs> a Rokus, a Roku. use a Roku, <laughs> use a Rokus, <laughs> yes, use, uh, buy a Roku. Nah, and we're not arguing. Uh, and look, and it's not anything against Apple, it's really not, it's just, honestly. Right now, they have fewer problems. They have problems, and, uh, or the Apple TVs have problems, and, uh, and the integration with automation systems is just superior on the Roku. I will not, and, unless Apple changes the way that they do things, I'm going to keep saying it. So, but that's, that's whatever. Anyways. Um, okay, Brent. On that happy note. Shall we wrap it up? I think it's uh, time to close out this Wednesday. Okay. Um, I'm Brent McCall with Metro AV Tech Tips. I'm Adam Rogers with Metro AV Tech Tips. Reboot early. Reboot often. Don't cut your wire too short. Turn off CEC. Call tech support when you have a problem. And uh, make sure your HD base T is at least 20 meters long. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.